All right, so who in this room eats fish? Yeah, probably most of you, right? It's delicious. Um, how many of you realize that in the next 10 years, more than half of your fish will come from aquaculture? Right, all right, so it's an informed audience, excellent. Um, at the moment, it's about $180 billion industry. In the next 10 years, it's going to be about $300 billion. That's an incredible amount of growth. How many of you knew that aquaculture is both filthy and inefficient? <laughs> right, it, it, it can be. Um, in some subsectors, there's as much as a 50% mortality rate in aquaculture. That means that fish born on these farms never make it off and into your plate. Um, and this costs us. It costs us in clean water, it costs us in different dimensions of environmental sustainability, and it costs us in, uh, in dollars. Um, and the lion's share of this is coming from, from infectious disease. Um, but we, we have a new solution. Uh, it's high tech, it's low cost, and it's extremely portable. Nanocapsules. So Biofin is a new biotechnology company. We're taking the latest developments in human biomedicine and applying them to, to aquaculture. Uh, we're, we're building these tiny molecular transporters uh, that are specific both to aquaculture species and to the pathogens that infect them. Um, and so there's three parts to this. Um, there is the inert biodegradable biocapsule. Uh, there is a trace amount of active compound contained within. Um, that includes medicines, essential oils, or nutrients. Uh, and then the trick is that there are molecular tags that are placed on the surface of these nanocapsules that help deliver these compounds to the tissues in the fish species or into the, the pathogens. And so though this tech is, is, is really cutting edge, um, you know, the process is pretty straightforward and simple. There have been billions of dollars that have been spent in cancer medicine and decades worth of research, and we're just reappropriating that. Um, and so we now how to put, know how to put these nanocapsules together um, to, to build the, the types of ingredients, the types of active compounds that we need, and you integrate those into fish pellets, and then you feed them to fish just as you would any other kind of, of feed. Um, so will, uh, will this make money? Um, and the answer to that is a resounding yes. The aquatic animal feed market is about $50 billion. Um, about $20 billion is dedicated to preventing and treating disease. Um, we're going to enter this $70 billion market through shrimp and salmon. Shrimp because it's the fastest growing subsector in aquaculture, and salmon because it's, it's, it's so high value. So to reiterate, what we're going to do is sell a high value uh, advanced biotechnology with low production costs and a low regulatory market. Um, and these, these cost savings are going to be realized by farmers and feed producers, and ultimately us by Biofin. Um, through our calculations, we estimate that we can increase value by up to 100% in farmer revenues. And that cost savings and profit is then passed back to the feed producers and passed back to us as the, the nanotechnology company. Um, but, but who are our customers? Globally, there are thousands of farmers, right? Uh, it'd be very difficult for us to target them. Um, and these guys range from folks that have backyard ponds to highly industrial, industrialized feed facilities. Um, and so what we're going to do is target the feed companies because these guys have their fingers in all of these different dimensions of aquaculture. Um, and there are different flavors of this, right? There are these multi-billion dollar global corporations that I'm sure some of you know of. Uh, there's family-run producers, and there's also innovative startups that are working on insect feed, for example, um, who we think that we can work with in, in, in all of these different aspects. Um, but, uh, but what are we up against? The competition. Global food companies, aquaculture companies, and nanotech companies. And I put this here just to illustrate that we've got this mapped out. We knew who we're competing against. Some of these folks will actually be our customers as well. And so we're going to have to dance with these guys to make sure that we, you know, we, we get to the solutions that we need for this more sustainable world. And why us? Well, I think we've got an excellent team. Uh, my co-founder in the audience right here is a materials engineer with a PhD in nanoscience. He spent the ha past half decade developing nanocapsules for cancer medicine uh, at some of the leading research centers in Europe. Uh, and I'm a medical doctor and environmental scientist. Uh, I've authored over 40 reports, reports on environmental topics, global health topics, infectious disease, aquaculture, and fisheries. Uh, and for the past 10 years, have been working at the World Bank, uh, financing a lot of these same issues. Uh, and to fill our gaps, we have an excellent team of advisors as well, spanning aquaculture, nanotechnology, and uh, innovation. And about our plan, well, we've got this mapped out too. Um, we're focusing on three categories, funding, customer development, and product development. Um, as you can see, you know, we've mapped this through 2021. As you can also see, we're very new. Uh, we just formed in, in, uh, in October of this past year. Uh, and in that time, we've already achieved $100,000 in startup investment from Silicon Valley. Uh, we've got a strategy mapped out for our intellectual property. Uh, we've identified labs that we're going to work with, uh, and we have expressions of interest uh, from more than half a dozen feed companies.
So, uh, in terms of money, wh what do we need? Well, we need about a million and a half bucks to get this going, um, and, and we think we're on track to get this. Um, so in closing, we'll just say uh, that Biofin is developing cutting-edge bio, cutting biotechnologies uh, for people and, and the planet. You know, we're starting small, literally with nanotechnology and shrimp, but are expanding in other dimensions of aquaculture, agriculture, uh, and potentially even into space. Lovely, great. Pause a moment. I like the idea you start small with shrimps. That's, That's kind of even a, smaller with nanotech. Yeah, right. Nano shrimps. Okay, let's have question, uh, questions about shrimps and beyond. Yes. I um, I didn't really understand how you're using this in the feed pellets. I think you said, and also, do you think how, how is that? Does that improve the FCR or? Yeah, I apologize. We really just breathe, breathe through the, the science there. Um, but effectively, what we're doing is we're creating an additive to, to feed pellets. So instead of adding other antibiotics or other different kinds of nutrients, you just condense this down into a nanocapsule and put that into the feed. And because the nanocapsules are so specific to the target tissue, you can use a very trace amount of it. Um, so it's the same technology that's used in chemotherapy, for example. Um, you know, now for the past, you know, 30, 40 years, chemotherapy has been very toxic. Uh, with recent advances, um, it, it's gotten better and it's less toxic uh, in some respects as a result of nanotechnology for targeting uh, these, uh, these nutrients and medicines. Well, okay. The FCR? Does it improve? Uh do you yeah. expect to improve the FCR? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the, that's the goal. You know, and we're looking at different species. We're looking at shrimp and salmon. Um, and within the next couple of weeks, we, we should start, to start testing. Okay, any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, so um, I understand that the, you know, the, the, the nanocapsule approach uh, uh, enables uh, targeting. Yes. Uh, and uh, so I would assume that the benefit of that is that, so I, I understand that you, under, you use maybe traditional medicine, but in a much more efficient way. And therefore, the saving would be on the you know the cost of the medicine or you know the quantity you would use rather than on uh, uh, actually lowering mortality rates. But so I, I'm not making the link between the technology and the you know the benefits. So if you can help us on this. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, effectively, it does both. Um, so because it's it's targeted, um, you'd have greater efficacy of having that medicine reach its mark, uh, and therefore reducing mortality. But at the same time, because you're nanonizing it, uh, you're reducing the amount of quantity that's needed. And so in some cases, that may be the same medicines that are used now, um, but it may be alternatives. So for example, essential oils are very often antibacterial. Um, and you can use those. The problem is that they're not used currently is because they don't hit their target, right? And so you can take some of these toxic medications that might pollute the environment uh, and use a, a natural substitute. 